The following program is a public service of Gulf Coast State College, WKGC, and Commodore Productions. And now, the Military Hour with Carrie Dieter. Welcome to another edition of Military Hour. I have a very special guest this morning. I have uh, Mr. A.J. Bacon, and he is the commander of local DAV, Disabled American Veterans Chapter 17. And also, he is the new president of the Bay County Veterans Council. A.J., welcome. Thanks for coming out. I'm looking forward to hearing some good information on DAV, and then after you're finished with that, telling all the viewers about it, then the Bay County Veterans Council. There's a lot of good information coming out and a lot more on the horizon. So if you want to start by filling us in on the DAV, let's roll. Well, thank you very much, uh, Sir. Uh, Carrie. And uh, you know, we certainly thank Gulf Coast uh, State College uh, for giving us an opportunity to come out and share information and, and especially their support for veterans and the veterans uh, community. Absolutely, yes sir. So uh, first of all, the disabled American veterans, uh, basically after uh, you know some history of the national organization, basically after World War I, uh, a lot of veterans uh, came back and they had you know, certainly some injuries, uh, yes. disabilities, and stuff. So that uh, motivated um, um, people to come together uh, to organize the Disabled American mm -hmm. Veterans. Uh, so uh, it's been around since 1920, so about 98 years. And in 2020, we will celebrate, you know, the centennial uh, yes, of, uh, of the national organization. And the basic uh, purpose of it is certainly uh, uh, people with disabilities sometimes can be frowned upon, uh, whatever, or either the misconceptions that uh, the title disabled mean you can't do anything. Yeah. You know, so basically, uh, you know, the, the core mission of the Disabled American Veterans is to empower veterans to live lives with dignity and with respect and continue to advocate for, you know, benefits or the promises that, was, that were made, you know, uh, by this great nation of ours, you know, on behalf of the veterans and all of those that have served this nation. Yes, sir, absolutely. I'm well aware of that, and a lot of people may not realize going back to the inception of DAV was about the same time a lot of the other veteran service organizations came into being too, like the uh, American Legion and such. So uh, not just to single them out, but most of them came into existence around that same time period. So is there any specific programs within the DAV that you'd like to share or things that are going on upcoming events? Um, certainly, um, you know, uh, basically here, DAV Chapter uh, uh, 17, um, located in Panama City. Um, you know, it's located at the Bay County Fairgrounds. Uh, we uh, share the facility, or we're a, a, a guest um, tenant of uh, American Legion Post uh, 66. 66, yeah, uh, over by the post office and the fairgrounds. Exactly, on the northwest entrance uh, of, of the fairgrounds. Yep. Uh, and we meet the second Monday of the month at uh, 7 p.m., 1900 hours. Uh, and we start uh, usually at about 6.30 or so. We have a, like a pre-meeting uh, social for, for about 30 minutes. Uh, but some of the key programs, Disabled American Veterans, and I'll talk about, uh, you know, our chapter as well as uh, national. Yes. Um, certainly one of the key purposes we have, like, uh, veteran um, uh, chapter service officers, mm -hmm. which is basically uh, certified uh, officers. We have two at Chapter 17, uh, which you get an annual certification to help veterans navigate through their claim process as far as uh, filing claims. Sure. So uh, when we say veterans, it's not only veterans, but it's like family members uh, of veterans. There are benefits there for them as well and stuff. So we want them to be able to access the full range of those uh, benefits. So uh, that's a key point that we advocate for disabled American veterans. Um, and certainly as far as um, you know, transporting veterans to appointments and things of that magnitude. Uh, even though um, 
certainly disabled American veterans. We have some veterans that have more infirmities uh, than others, uh, but many of them are still able to contribute. They continue to serve, right. you know, by giving back, volunteering at numerous things uh, and events that's uh, in the community. Uh, one of the key things, uh, certainly uh, for us disabled American veterans, Chapter 17 has been around about 72 years. Here yeah. in Bay County? Yes, and, and so um, we have been pretty fortunate uh, over the years with, uh, you know, the leadership of people stepping up, you know, stepping up to the plate to continue to keep that, uh, keep that chapter going. Uh, on the national side and throughout, we have volunteers at many, like, uh, veteran clinics. Uh, to assist the uh, veterans there, usually most of them uh, are at the re reception center there and stuff, greeting you, giving you uh, instructions, uh, uh, directions on, on, on how to get around that actual facility. Uh, you know, so it's a multitude of ways um, that we impact the, the lives of veterans in the, in the community. Uh, we have an event that's uh, planning coming up in, um, in May. Um, the, around uh, the 14th or 15th uh, of May, uh, where the actual DAV mobile service uh, office is uh, planning on coming to uh, uh, Bay County uh, to our actual chapter. And, and that's the ones that are our regional office for the, um, for the VA and the DAV is located in St. Petersburg, uh, Florida. So they're coming up here to assist uh, veterans in processing their claims uh, with uh, national service officers uh, that'll be with them and stuff. So uh, uh, it'd be more to come on that with information, but that should be the week of the 14th of May. Yeah, please make sure that I get that information so I can post it out on the Military Hour Facebook page. But they're actually gonna come here with a mobile unit. And are they gonna set up there over at the uh, uh, post 66 where you meet? Yes, they're going to set, at, uh, set up at the Bay County Fairgrounds and uh, between uh, uh, access to their mobile unit and our uh, uh, meeting facility there, uh, they'll be setting up uh, stations and stuff to get, um, you know, help veterans and family members in reference to the uh, claims and benefits as well as giving them uh, more current information, you know, on uh, those benefits and, and processes that's going on with the uh, with the Veterans Administration. Yeah, and they'll probably have handouts and, and instruction books and things like that. Tell uh, all the viewers and, and listeners what is required to join DAV. Well, thank you for asking that, uh, Carrie. Uh, the Disabled American Veterans is, is basically, you know, any um, uh, veteran that has uh, uh, served the country, uh, has honorably served the country, and, and has disabilities. It doesn't have to be service-connected disabilities, which means they don't have to be receiving uh, disability compensation from the Veterans Administration. Uh, it could be uh, any member that served and is, wasn't a service-connected uh, um, um, injury or something they have may have been post-service. Sure. You know, but they're still eligible uh, to join the Disabled American Veterans. And uh, Disabled American Veterans basic mem membership is usually uh, life membership, which uh -huh. is uh, uh, $250 uh, uh, that gives you a life membership. S that amount certainly decreases in increments as far as your age is concerned. Uh, and if you're like over 80, it's free, uh, it's free for veterans and stuff. Huh. But it's, it is uh, very affordable. They have even installation, um, installment uh, plan for you to, to pay whatever you can each month as a partial life member until you can get to life membership. Well, that is good information. I, a lot of what you just said, I, I was not aware of. I was under the impression, because I'm not a member, I haven't joined, uh, shame on me, but I was under the impression that you had to be service connected with a disability, which I mean, I am, but that is kind of inclusive, uh, that if you want to become a member, you, you certainly can do that. So somebody, say, comes up with, well, let's use diabetes, because that's like a modern day one. So if somebody comes up with that, and it's not service connected, they're still eligible to join and considered a disabled veteran. 
Is that correct? Exactly. So membership in general is very broad as far as eligibility right. uh, is concerned. You know, you verify that you served in the military, sure, sure. you know, be it, uh, you know, a discharge certificate or we know the classic DD Form 214. 214 yeah. um, um, to, to prove that fact, then, uh, you know, we welcome them uh, aboard as, you know, to join us and help advocate for the for the cause of, uh, you know, having uh, veterans live lives with dignity and, and respect. Absolutely. Now, again, for the benefit of the, the viewers and listeners, um, how and where can they go to actually avail themselves to be able to do this? Is there a website they can visit and do an application or pick up an application? locally somewhere so somebody wants to join today what can they do uh certainly you know in this uh, uh technology age right there certainly is a website so they can go to www.dav.org and they can go online and read more about the disabled american veterans as well as they can uh join or sign up uh for membership there uh certainly uh uh, they can uh, present themselves to one of our meetings again uh, the second Monday of the month at 7 p.m. at the Bay County Fairgrounds, and we can do it the traditional way, right? Hard copy, sure. Um, filling out the actual paper form. Uh, DAV does have uh, for members of the DAV, uh, especially uh, the ones on membership committees. It's an uh, we have a DAV app, so uh, technically I can sign you up right now. You know, on my phone, you just give me the information and stuff, and I put it in there. I can sign you up um, uh, right here and now. And, and we also have membership drives, right? Um, one of our greatest partners uh, nationally and locally is Golden Corral. Is that um, right? Yes. So uh, they, they allow us to, you know, to, to, to set up a booth, or a table there to hand out, uh, you know, DAV uh, literature, uh, even a... Uh, um, you know, uh, uh, donations uh, as far as that's concerned, and uh, also uh, forget-me-nots, you know, to hand those sure. out. So they're a great uh, corporate, uh, you know, partner with the Disabled American Veterans, and especially we know that they're local here in this community, and we know on Veterans Day that they uh, certainly uh, give back greatly to Oh, yeah, yeah, everybody knows they do the meal, but mm -hmm. I did not know that they were a sponsor of DAV. So that's good. That's a big corporate sponsor right there. It, it is, and they have a program through Golden Corral, a special program for the disabled American veterans called Camp Corral. And that's uh, for like a uh, family member, youth, children, huh. you know, uh, of veterans and stuff. So it's basically like a little summer camp program and stuff that they have annually and stuff. So. Well, that's fabulous. It's good to know. I just found out in, in the last couple of months about the Fort McCoy that VFW has down there. I was like, wow, I mean, that's a place you can go and live. So that, it's a nice facility. Uh, I haven't personally seen it, but I know people that have and they told me about it. And our next trip south, I want to go see that thing. I really didn't want to check it out. So, And then I want to do Camp Corral. So what, do you know where the closest one of those is? Well, um, uh, certainly, um, I think um, last year there was one in Jacksonville, Jacksonville. you know, and, and then there's, I think there's a few that moves on up a little further north. Is, um, I think one is in, uh, in Texas. Um, yeah, we would do Jacksonville. Uh, yeah, yeah, so, um, and, and again, uh, that information is, is available, too, uh, on, the, on the DAV website. Good uh, and certainly for us, you know, you know, being veterans, is so many uh, great things that's going on. We just need to be more informed about uh, the, the e events and the services that might be right. available, things for veterans yeah. that's out there. So I think uh, certainly the military hour gives us an opportunity locally to share that and also talk about some national, uh, you know, veteran related. Yes, sir. And that's exactly what this military hour is for. We call it an hour, but it's 30 minutes. But it's simply to get information out to the public at large and the veteran community and families. Because none of us know it all or experience it all, but together we can work and share and, and coalesce. So we should all be propping each other up and helping each other because we're in this thing together. 
So <laughs> certainly, certainly, and um, and one thing that's uh, unique, certainly about um, you know the DAV our meetings are, are open type meetings. Oh, wow. so uh, if, if guests or the public wants to attend, then they can feel free to attend. Uh, certainly, uh, when election time comes, they're, they're you know, certainly only members are allowed right, to, right, to right. vote as far as elected officers is concerned. Sure. But if they want to, you know, uh, someone want to come in, sit in, and see what's, uh, see what's going on or see how we operate, we certainly welcome them. Good deal. That is, that's good news, too. Mm -hmm. So if you want to check out the DAV, second Monday, 1900, 7 o'clock. Yes. Somebody that's not a member can come in, sit down, check it out, see what's going on. And if it's for you, join. If it's not for you, join anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> I had to do that, <laughs> you know. Anyways, what is the next big thing that you have coming up on the horizon? Well, certainly we know uh, we have... Um you know, um, events that uh, the Department of Florida, the State of Florida, State Convention, you know, is coming up, and mm -hmm. that's in Orlando. Orlando. And, and that's uh, like the 1st of June, you know, end of May, 31st of May. And the National Convention uh, this year is uh, in July, which is in uh, Reno. Um, you know, Reno, I can Nevada. get in trouble in Reno. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so that's when we uh, usually. Uh, you know, come together and, and talk about the national issues and have uh -huh. uh, certainly uh, um, national speakers. You know, it's usually it could be uh, one year we had the president uh, come down, I think uh, a couple years ago uh -huh. in Atlanta, President Obama uh, was a guest speaker there. Uh, certainly senators, you know, a lot, a lot of people in the legislative branch, you know, will avail themselves to come and speak to us as far as that's concerned. Uh, now, um, on a local level, we know certainly uh, we're very involved in things, especially like Memorial Day uh, weekend, right. you know, uh, as far as uh, reaching out in the community, especially as far as forget me nots to, to remember those that, yes. that served this nation and gave the ultimate sacrifice. Um, uh, we also uh, certainly uh, parades, when parades come up, Veterans Day parade, normally we participate in, in, in two Veterans Day parades. We do the Panama City Parade, right. and we also uh, do the Callaway uh, Parade. Uh, so we want to, uh, we have such an awesome patriotic community here oh. in Bay County. We are blessed. <laughs> To have uh, such a you know patriotic yep. people here in, in Bay County, both individuals and businesses as, as well and stuff. Sure. So uh, the least we can do is you know uh, you know participate in the parade, and it's it's just totally awesome to see people coming out, you know, being there for us, cheering us on, uh, from young children you know to to older um, um, members, um, uh, uh, individuals coming out you know, and, and showing the pride, you know, and support for the veteran community. You know, I've been known to come up with these off the wall ideas and I've got an idea cooking around in my head now. I don't know what it will cost or if it's even feasible, but what I would like to do, and you probably got one, and if you don't, I'll get you one, but I would like to distribute pocket constitutions to all the schools, free, no charge, to give to each and every student and each and every teacher. Because if you don't have one and you've never learned it, you can't know what's in it. But if you have one, it's already referenced. So that's one of my crazy ideas. So I'm looking for partners on that one too. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that definitely sounds great. And I, I think we can, um, you know, um, certainly never be, uh, you know, um, over-informed in reference to us, you know, things as the magnitude of, of the Constitution, uh, especially as you grow up from a youth into adult and, and move into that voting age. Right. Uh, again, you want to be a well-informed, you know, uh, voter as well as a well-informed, you know, veteran, you know, with the veteran uh, service organizations that are, that are in the community. Yep. Diligence, vigilance, and allegiance, and then as a citizen, then you're a participant. You vote, and you vote the way you believe is best. Exactly, yeah, so. exactly. Anyway, that's all I gotta say, say about that. <laughs> Everybody that can vote should vote, period.
I mean, no excuse not to. Yes. And if you don't vote, don't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Just. <laughs> and I know, um, you know, recently I know um, uh, Gary uh, Sinise uh, was here at Tendo. Yep. He is a huge supporter of the Disabled American Veterans. Yes, sir. Virtually every national convention, certainly ones that I've been to, he has been there, Lieutenant Dan yep. and, and Lieutenant his band, Dan Band. Strong supporter of the of the military and stuff. So uh, I'm certainly many people were excited that uh, that he came here to the local area yep. as well and stuff. I was able to go and take my bride, went with Brother Dave, <laughs> and uh, wow, I was more than impressed. I'd seen him in D.C. before at the wall, but it's just a fantastic job at Tyndall. It was well worth the price, which was free. I mean, how's it getting any better than that? And he does this on his own dime. So, thanks. Thank you, Gary Sneeze and Lieutenant Dan Band. Yes. Yeah, fabulous. And a, a great variety of music as well. Yes. It wasn't just one genre or mm. one. I mean, he <laughs> they covered all of them. So, and it was good. Two and a half hours, strong and long, <laughs> and it was good. So, yes. now shall we move on to the Bay County Veterans Council? Oh yes, uh, certainly. Um, basically, uh, the Bay County Veterans Council, and as well as the DAV, uh, certainly nonprofit uh, organizations. Uh, but the uh, Bay County Veterans Council basically uh, came into being in uh, in like 2005. Um, because certainly with all the veteran service organizations in the community, it became a challenge, uh, especially for uh, uh, elected leaders, right, uh, when different VSO was coming to them with certain issue or whatever, and then the other VSO was coming with the opposite or something. Yeah. So they were seeking some type of middle ground. Uh, so. Um, uh, they got together, you know, and, and many of the veteran service organizations, you know, they came together and they organized the Bay County Veterans Council to be a unified voice for core issues for the VSOs. So right. basically through uh, collaboration, the VSO uh, uh, leaders or representatives that meet each month will talk about certain issues and come to common ground on those key issues and then up channeling them to be the mayor, the commissioners, uh, both here locally and statewide, and to include up channeling it to, to, to national uh, aspect of it. So it gave uh, more organizations to the voice, a unified voice uh, for the veteran service organization on key core issues. Certainly the other minor issues uh, were things that uh, the VSOs will sort out within themselves. Yeah, and, and then there, are, uh, if it's not a core issue and it's local, then they can all be working together, even if it's coordinating calendars or events, things like that. So I would encourage, and I, I would think you would encourage, that each post, whether it's an AMVETS or a Legion or VFW, DAV, whatever the case may be, join the Bay County Veterans Council, and that way you're part of helping one another to keep things moving smoothly and even supporting one another uh, with events. Uh, and you can deconflict calendars that way, much easier. So correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, exactly, and, and that's the process that we certainly are moving up, um, you know, forward with certainly membership in the council is a minimal $25 annually. So a uh, post mm -hmm. can join, have a representative, $25 for a year. Exactly. So um, 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 veteran service organizations, uh, you know, certainly here in the county, uh, we welcome them and encourage them to come to help us, you know, be a unified voice, uh, you know, here, you know, both uh, locally and uh, and the statewide. Um, now, certainly the, the Veteran Council, a couple of key things, we, we do uh, uh, um, organize, help organize and sponsor the Memorial Day celebration, uh, especially at, at, at Kent Forest. Mm -hmm. um, and also the Veterans Day Parade, we're a sponsor and, and an organizer with the Veterans Day Parade. Um, one of the key things that we, do, uh, what, that we do that many people may not be aware, the Military Welcome Center at uh, Northwest Florida Airport is is one of the awesome 
awesome, uh, um, you know, um, um, missions that we came up with for us welcoming and being there at the airport to welcome right. uh, uh, active duty members of veterans coming into Bay County or maybe going out and providing, you know, complimentary refreshments uh, there for them. Uh, so uh, uh, the Military Welcome Center, you know, has been really, you know, one of our key, you know, uh, um, key, um, um, you know, veteran related, you know, e events that we've established and set up and we're able to maintain it. And certainly uh, we have, we encourage people to volunteer. To, to, to go out there and uh, and uh, Miss Carol Hertz is our volunteer, you know, uh, uh, coordinator. coordinator. Mm -hmm. um, and in reference to and but if um, you give me a little leeway here, um, this weekend, um, March the uh, March the tenth at the St Andrews uh, Civic Club, uh, right by Oaks by the Bay, um, at uh, one o'clock, thirteen hundred hours, we are going to honor. Uh, our volunteers that uh, uh, that have been volunteering at the Military Welcome Center, and, and so um, uh, we look forward to that. You know, especially when you got volunteers that avail themselves. And certainly, you do not have to be a veteran, uh, uh, military related. If you uh, if you um, enjoy supporting veterans in the community, uh, certainly uh, give Carol a call and, and, and I'm sure that she can uh, set up a shift for you to be there at the Military Welcome Center. I'm going to get myself in a little bit of trouble. You can call her husband, Daryl, too, <laughs> and you can call him the Big Cheese. That's what we call it. And of course, uh, give a little bit of credit to Warrior Watch Riders because they do a lot of the welcomes, welcoming troops home. They ride out in the motorcycles fly their flags, and they do deployments as well. So, uh, but Carol and Daryl Hertz, uh, Patriots extraordinaire go over and above and beyond, and they love the troops, and they're wonderful, loving people. They're just quality, good people. Exactly, and certainly, um, you know, um you know, the Bay County Veterans Council, you know, um, you know I'm an individual that certainly, uh, you know, um, want to be connected and, you know, give back in the community, especially, you know, faith based wise, right. you know, you know, uh, you know, being being a you know, follower of Jesus Christ. You know, I, I believe in doing good works, good deeds. Sure. And, and certainly that's been a core principle uh, of related to military and veterans. You know, so that kind of goes hand in hand. Uh, so, um, you know, when I first uh, joined or started attending the council again, they, they, they welcomed me in with, uh, with open arms. Yep. And, and, and certainly I'm just honored, you know, to, to preside as a president over such a distinguished you know, council with outstanding members that are in there. Oh, wow, I, uh, Carrie, I can't begin to tell you, you know, how outstanding the members are in the Bay County Veterans Council and how supportive uh, they are of me and the community and, you know, veterans. They are strong advocates. Absolutely. Uh, be it uh, attending, you know, any uh, county commission meeting uh, or any uh, city. Uh, commission meeting, they are concerned, genuinely concerned about the veteran community, yep. uh, be it any uh, veteran memorials from the Gulf Coast uh, Memorial Park to Pier Park to, to be it uh, uh, down at the marina, whatever it is yep. in the community, they are passionate about it. So, yep. uh, so I'm, I'm, again, uh, I'm certainly honored to, to, to be the president of a uh, of a distinguished council there and certainly honored and blessed to be the commander of the disabled american veterans amen to that and uh, you may not see us at every event but you will see us at a lot of events because none of us can make every event because I mean, <laughs> there's a lot that goes on here because it is such a tremendous veterans community and i know you are a repository of knowledge so I want to give you open door, come back anytime you want to come back on military hour and share with us. I'm happy to sit with you as a new member at the Bay County Veterans Council, looking to you for great leadership. I want to thank big Jim Dozier of the Purple Hearts. He's, he's done an outstanding job as well. And everybody there, uh, 
works in good faith, and that's what we need. They do in the uh, entire community. Certainly, and um, uh, from uh, you know Big Jim Dozier being past president to Norman Steisner, oh, you know going on back to to Neil Bates. I mean, uh, we have had great leadership there on the yes. council, and we still have extraordinary leadership, and we encourage. The, especially younger veterans as far as membership in veteran service organizations, be it the DAV, VFW, yep. the, the Legion, the AMVETS. We encourage the, the younger veterans, yeah. come on out and, 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 um, and, and join us or at least sit in, you yep. know, see what's going on. And, and they will realize, you know, how awesome it is to, to continue that comradeship you know, uh, from, you know, veteran to veteran yep. and, and help give back, you know, in the community. And it's not just a bunch of old geezers, <laughs> uh, guys and gals sitting around at these things. There is a good influx and mix of all generations, young, old, but we're going to leave you with this quick little message. If you're not a member of a VSO, check one out, join one. If you're not a member of the DAV, come out, check that out join that if you feel led to but moreover than that support your veterans here at home and if you can lend a hand give a hand you get more out of volunteering than that and, and giving than receiving it's a true statement so yes, aj man. once again thank you brother thank Appreciate you very you. much my brother yes sir absolutely <laughs> till next time see you on military hour <laughs>